Hey, second grade, it's Mrs. Alar back again with another chapter of Dolphins at Daybreak. So before we go into our next chapter, which is chapter nine of Dolphins at Daybreak, let's go over some of the discussion questions that we had yesterday um, for chapter eight. So if you remember our chapter eight of Dolphins at Daybreak, our um, vocabulary word was the word float. And so we defined float as to rest or to lay on the surface of the water. So when you're floating, you're laying on the water and you're just kind of floating on top of it, right? That's what float means in this section of our book. And our discussion question for chapter eight was, how are the dolphins being helpful in this chapter? And so the dolphins are being helpful because the dolphins are helping Annie and Jack get to shore, right? They're on the dolphins back and they're going with them. And so how do you think Jack and Annie are feeling? I feel like they're feeling very thankful for the dolphins because the dolphins are helping them get to shore. If without the dolphins, they might not have made it, right? So let's go ahead and read chapter nine. Chapter nine says, ouch, chapter nine. The sun shone on the ocean. It sparkled like a diamond. Jack felt safe now. His dolphin was taking very good care of him. The dolphin slowed down as they neared the reef. Jack lowered his feet. He felt the bumpy coral. He let go of the dolphin's fin and stood up in the water. Annie stood too. Then she threw her arms around her dolphin and gave her a big hug. Thank you, Suki, she cried, and she kissed the dolphin's nose. Suki tossed her head and clicked at Annie. Kiss Sam now, Annie said to Jack. You're nuts, said Jack. But Sam nuzzled Jack's head. Then he put his flipper around Jack's neck. Jack couldn't resist. He threw his arms around the dolphin and gave him a quick kiss. Sam nodded and made clicking sounds like laughter. Then he turned to Suki. The two dolphins chattered to each other for a moment. They nodded back at Jack and Annie and they swam gracefully away. Bye, Suki. Bye, Sam, Annie shouted. Thanks, Jack shouted. The dolphins leapt high into the air. Then they dove back into the water with a splash. Jack and Annie laughed. I wish we could swim like that, said Jack. Jack and Annie watched as the dolphins until they disappeared. I miss them already, Annie said softly. Me too, said Jack. He sat down in the shallow water. I am really tired, he said. Annie sat beside him. Me too, she said. The warm water had lapped around their shorts and t-shirts. Jack pulled off his backpack. He took out his glasses and put them back on. They were blurry with water. Guess what, said Annie. What, said Jack. I saw the shark when we were swimming, Annie said. I didn't tell you. I wanted you to stay calm. Jack stared at her. I saw it too. I just swam faster so you would swim faster. And I swam faster, so you would swim faster, said Annie. I guess we swam double fast then, said Jack. He shook his head with wonder. What now, said Annie. We go home, said Jack. But we haven't solved Morgan's riddle yet, said Annie. Jack sighed. He pulled out his notebook. It was soaked. He pulled out his ocean book. It was soaked too. We have failed, he said. My research is all wet. We'll never be master librarians now. Jack put everything away. Let's go, he said sadly. He stood up. Then they started across the pink reef toward the treehouse. Annie followed him. Ouch, Annie said. What's wrong? Jack looked back. I stepped on something. Annie bent down and rubbed her foot. What? A shell? said Jack. Yeah, this. She picked up the gray shell. Boy, it is rough. Rough and gray. And plain as can be, she whispered. They had found the answer. The shell looked like a clam shell, only bigger with more ridges. How could this ugly shell be the answer to the riddle, said Annie. What about the part that says there's great beauty in me? Wait, research, said Jack. He opened the soaked ocean book. The pages were stuck together, but he was able to turn a few. He found a picture of the gray shell. He read, Divers search for oysters in deep water, but sometimes oysters wash up on the reef or beaches. Inside some oysters, you could find a pearl. The pearl's natural beauty makes it a treasure. 
It must have a pearl inside, said Jack. Annie peered into the crack between the two halves of the shell. I can't see anything, she said. How does a pearl get in there anyway? Jack read aloud from the wet page. Sometimes a grain of sand will get in between the oyster's shell and its skin. This irritates the oyster, so it makes a pearly material surround the grain of the sand. This way, over a few years, a pearl is formed. I can't tell if there's a pearl in there, said Annie. Maybe we should just bang it against the rock, said Jack. Now that would really irritate the oyster, said Annie. Yeah. Maybe we should just leave it alone, said Annie. She gently put the oyster back in the water. But how will we know if the oyster isn't the right answer to the riddle, said Jack. Morgan said we will know, said Annie. Come on. Jack pushed his glasses into place. Then he and Annie picked up their shoes and socks. They climbed through the window of the treehouse. Morgan's scroll was lying on the floor. It was open. Look, said Annie. She and Jack stared at the scroll. The riddle had faded away. In its place was a shimmering silver word. Oyster. Morgan is magic, whispered Annie. We got it right. Jack let out a huge sigh. And here's the Pennsylvania book, said Annie. Let's go home. She opened the book. She pointed to a picture of the Frog Creek Woods. I wish we could go there, she said. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. The wind blew harder and harder than everything was still. Absolutely still. And that is the end of chapter 9. We will come back tomorrow to read chapter 10 and hear about how Jack and Annie got back home. I hope you enjoyed chapter 8. Look in the comments for the vocabulary word and the discussion question.